Hello, and thank you for watching this video about graphing reciprocal trig functions. So we're going to look at secant. Uh, everything we're working here works the exact same way it does for cosecant. I just happen to be using secant as my example. The cosecant function, of course, would have an offset that this one doesn't. It, and uh, you, you can use the same idea for sine and cosine offsets that you used before to make that adjustment here. Okay, so the idea of amplitude, everything still works the same. You can notice that these would be the exact same definitions that we would have for sine and cosine. So if you've watched my video on that, this should look really familiar. We're going to graph 4 secant 2t minus 4. Okay, so the amplitude there is 4. That's from that first value right there. That's a little confusing, but I did it on purpose to point something out to you. The period here is pi because it's going to be 2 pi over 2. My, my coefficient right there of 2. Frequency, of course, is the reciprocal of period, so it makes it 1 over pi. Horizontal shift is 2 right. Now, where did I get that 2 from? From here. So notice right here I have a 4. It says minus 4. But remember the form. The form is with that b, that coefficient outside of t minus h. So what I have to do here is I have to rewrite this as t minus h times some value, which means I need a factor of 2l, which is why I'm going to right. And here, no uh, vertical shift, and that, that's really for convenience sake for this particular problem, just to make things a little bit easier. Uh, the vertical shift just moves it up a little bit for us. Now, this is what cosine would look like. So this isn't what secant looks like, okay? This is what cosine looks like, but I'm using this for a reason. I wanted to point out where everything look, uh, starts and looks like. So when we do secant, secant has the basic shape of this. All right, so why does this have the basic shape? Because this is a reciprocal. So it's gonna flip all the values. So what it ends up doing is it ends up flipping the graphs too, which is kind of a neat little effect of reciprocal functions as they flip the values, they flip the graphs which is uh, really a massively powerful and beautiful thing about mathematics. And I know I just scored some geek points with some of you there. So now what does that mean? What does it, how does it relate to all this other stuff? What it means is we'll go ahead and get rid of the, those blue lines. It means that this, these are these different locations we have here, like for instance, this right here, this is at four. And right here, this would be at negative four, right? The, the idea of the period here means that we are from there to there has to be a distance of pi. So what that means is this right here would have to be pi over four, and this would be three pi over four, right? Because we're, we're having to um, break that distance of pi down into uh, the, and, and use it, uh, you put it on this graph here, that total distance here has to be pi. So I just broke, pi up into fourths, and right dead center right here would be an asymptote, just like we would if we had a trig function, uh, a tangent or a cotangent function, okay? Because these are reciprocals, there's gonna be places where the denominator equals zero, and since we're talking about secant, we're talking places where the cosine value is equal to zero. All right, and that, that's really all there is to it. Uh, if you do vertical shift, it changes things a little bit. Oh, we need to shift this two units right. So the period here is pi, which is 3.14 approximately. So we're going to shift this two units to the right, which means pi over 4, which would be a little bit smaller than 1. Uh, pi over 4 is, against, again, just a little bit smaller than 1. Uh, so we're talking about moving this whole thing to starting the, where, this, where this pi over 4 would be. It's going to be about right there. Okay, And again, the best we can do is approximations here. So the red is going to indicate the, the final version of this graph. So we're going to have the curve there, an asymptote, and the curve there. And then it repeats, just like tangent and cotangent would. Okay? And there you go. And it gets a little messy, but you can do, do your best with it. All right? All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.